Kia ora koutou and welcome to South Pacific Muscle. Tonight we are joined by Dan Mazzola. Dan has got a real extensive bodybuilding history. Um, I think I first met Dan 2000 something um, when he was competing initially with um, the NZIFBB. He was the overall men's physique winner one year, um, winning a number of regional titles before that and placing second in, at the Arnold Classic as well as doing the Arnold in Ohio. So had a, had a long stint there with NZIFBB. Um, for whatever political reasons, at one point they weren't giving out pro cards, so um, that opportunity didn't arise at the time, but it created a whole bunch of new opportunities, as you're about to see. So um, I guess WBFF came onto the scene 2015-ish. It, it sort of popped up on the radar for me. And um, initially in the Australasian region, they had um, the Sydney and the Gold Coast comps, and I was lucky enough to go to one of those. So Dan went down that path and managed to turn pro after his first show with them, which is that's a, that's a real uh, way to jump in at the deep end. And he went pro in the muscle model class, and he became the Australasian pro champion and placed seventh at the Worlds in the Bahamas of all places. So, you know, you've got to pick a place that suits um, the WBFF, and Bahamas sort of sums it up for me. Uh, welcome, Dan. Good to, have, good to have you on board tonight. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, look, um, for those that don't know outside of bodybuilding, um, you wear a lot of hats, man. You, you know, Dan owns a construction firm. He has an online training business. He is a director and owner of the New Zealand franchise for the WBFF. And the first thing I think is, how do you fit that all into? You know, how do you manage that many things on the go? Um, I guess doing it over time, things gradually increase. You know, you don't plan to go out there and do all these things all at once. Um, but passions take over and... You know, if it's something you want to do, you just you make time for it and you make that available time. Um, a lot of it came about, well, particularly like the online training stuff was something that I always wanted to get into. Um, but it wasn't really till we hit COVID that it kind of really put things in perspective for me. And, you know, I've got a successful construction company, but um, doesn't necessarily fulfill me. It doesn't mm -hmm. excite me to get up in the mornings. Um, and my passion has always been, you know, training and helping others. So that kind of that's how that kind of snowballed um, because I thought you know what better time than now to sort of start pursuing that and to be in an online space you know if the the way the world is at the moment you know that's another opportunity that you kind of everyone should maybe be looking at other avenues you know because we don't know what way it's going to go so that was yeah. kind of how it pushed me that way. No, it's, it's, it's kind of like nice to see something positive come out. I mean, there are a lot of positive um, business stories that have come out of COVID. There are also some really tough ones. And, um, you know, your heart goes out to those people that have really struggled during that time. But um, Kiwi Innovation seems to have got a, a kick up the arse and people are um, looking at all, all sorts of different avenues and a lot more online business, which we really need to be doing. You know, we, I guess um, there are a lot of opportunities that were untapped and particularly in, in, in our area, um, people are starting to jump on board with those. And, and I had a look at your old training website, and I know you've got a new one coming up. So for those people that are interested at Dan Mazzola Training, um, now you have, have a, you have a bunch of things on there. So you've got a obviously you know different training programs and different um, time frames. You have a support group, a um, an online a closed um, Facebook group for your for your team. Um, you've got your own app. Um, 24 7 like support so i suppose when people come into shows and they need that little bit extra so you know what i saw when i looked at that was really what i would expect at a world-class level so mm -hmm. really yeah, yeah i think i think the, the most important thing for people dieting is accountability i mean we can all write a diet plan for someone but how many of them can actually stick to it and i think the most important part or what i provide is giving one-on-one -on -one support so I offer um, Zoom calls every week. We have one-on-one -on -one check ins um, That way they you know, feel they can be accountable to you. And then also having a support group with other clients. Um, we can share our wins and ups and downs and tips and tricks and you know, get a community vibe about it rather than kind of, here's your plan, go do it. Um, you know, they fall off the wagon pretty quick. So I think having something sustainable with support is 
the way to win it. Nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question, Mike, um, while I've got Dan here, because, um, you know, one of the reasons I like online training is that, you know, is that accountability. And um, this week, for the first time in 16, 17 weeks, I've had a few slack days and uh, I didn't get my check in on Sunday. So, I mean, I took the photos. I haven't got around to sending it. And my motivation's kind of. What would you be saying to me as a coach in my position right now? What would I? What should I be doing? Uh, reevaluate your goals. I mean, how bad do you want it? And start breaking those goals down into smaller goals. You need to have now a perfect week coming up. You need to have put some perfect days in a row. Uh, and if you can't do that, you need to kind of reevaluate your time frame on your goal because I know what your goal is and you haven't got that long uh, left. So I'd be looking for. I'd be looking to try and make you accountable to yourself again by uh, perhaps put a calendar up on the up on the wall, you know, cross off those days, try and get as many days in a row as you can, and then give yourself something to look forward to too. So if you go look, if I get seven days in a row, seven perfect days in a row, then I'm going to treat myself to something mm. small at the end of the week or at the end yeah. of the month. Or... I'd need to clear that, um, you know, that with my coach, but he's pretty good on that front, and I think. You know, the, the challenge for me isn't, you know, wasn't the having those perfect days because I had 16 weeks where I didn't miss a meal. I ate every meal. I did every single set and rep in the gym. And then it started with, I'm a bit tired at the end. I'm not going to do my two sets of traps because my traps are good anyway. And that was the thin, thin edge of the wedge. So I've only had sort of three days where I think I missed three sets of training. I've done all my cardio. I've probably been a bit half ass on my meals and haven't weighed everything I went there. That's close enough. And so I haven't totally fallen off the bandwagon, but I just feel like, um, you know, I probably should be messaging my coach. Dan, would you suggest that I be messaging my coach and say, this is where my headspace is at? Definitely. I think if, if you don't communicate with them, they're not going to be able to help you, you know, and, you know, you might check in at the end of the week and they'll be like, what's happened? You know, you put on a kilo or something and they're not really going to understand what's happening or your mindset. Whereas if you, you could have tackled that earlier in the week yeah. and they could have given you some motivation, you know, like Mike said, just ticking off small boxes, small wins every day, you know, that's what's going to lead to the end goal. So I think it's, it's, if you can hit it on the head, the sooner the better, you know, otherwise it just snowballs and then it gets out of control. Right, we're in this conference call. I'm off to write some goals. No, I will. <laughs> I, I, I take that on board, and that's the reason I asked you guys. It's sort of about accountability. So, thank you for you know from a, both of you. I know you've both done a bit of coaching, and and that's your area of specialty, not mine. Um, so, I'm going to take that on board. Right, um, I want to have a quick look at your Insta, Dan, because um, there's some there's some really cool photos up there. It's not your typical. Um, bodybuilder, just photos in the gym sort of thing. It's probably in line with what um, I would expect from someone in the WBFF, which, um, you know, my kind of snapshot of that, having, I went to one show in the Gold Coast. My daughter actually went to the show the following year because I couldn't go over. So, um, you know, we've had a bit of involvement there and I've actually made the wings up for some of the girls on stage and all that kind of thing. And, and look, the thing I took away from it, is a, is a very, very slick production. To me, it was at the level you would expect from a Victoria's Secret launch. Um, it, their backdrops, their, their use of technology, lighting, sound, um, the way they run their athletes on stage, everything is very, very classy. And um, that's, to me, sets them apart from, from the other federations into their niche um, that they're, they're aiming for. And... You know, your Instagram, I guess, is reflective of that because it shows probably something that's not your typical um, competitive bodybuilder whose focus is grunting away in the gym and standing on stage in tan once a year. Um, yep. So it's, a, this, uh, it's certainly something different. And I think the only other person I know in, in New Zealand from the guys is actually um, Bjorn, who was from uh, Hawks Bay, you know, he's over in the Gold Coast now and he's competing with WBFF. Have we got any other Kiwi uh, males that are, that are serious competitors with WBFF? Yep. So, um, Brian Choi, he was an ex IFBB oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guy. Yep. He was, he was sort of the first one that moved over and he's sort of the one that caught me onto it yep. and suggested I go do it. Um, so, Brian was kind of the first Kiwi to go over there and do it as the guys. Um, we've got Tyrone Bell, who's been a uh, He's yeah, been around the traps yeah. for a long time. Um, yep. Jake Campus also. Um, um, who else we got? 
Um, big Joel from Auckland. He's about 127 kilos. Big man. Um, so he's just turned pro as well in Gold Coast last year. Um, yeah, there's a handful of others. And then there's a whole heap of girls as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, the, the level that the girls are at in terms of um, their presentation and things, phenomenal. And the amount of work they do to get on stage and be part of that high-level production, it's really something else. Um, if you've never been, people that are watching, if you do get a chance to get along to a WBFF show, in, be it in New Zealand, be it in Australia, wherever, it's um, certainly a spectacle. And um, I think it's more accessible and it's actually probably got better viewability than your traditional bodybuilding show mm. yeah i think that that's the goal of it you know it is a you know it's a higher value item you know it, it does cost a little bit more to do these shows but when you go to them and you see them you realize how much money is going into them um and it's it's a five-star show you know we use the best venues in the country um so we held it at altair square um, in Auckland, which is the premier venue in the entire country, you know, this is where they have the operas and and everything. So um, the best lighting, you have full, um, we have full comms throughout everything on stage. Um, it's just really high in production, you know. I, I guess you would compare it to, um, say, UFC, for example. I'm not comparing the athletes at all because I think across all federations, everyone's amazing. Um, but to, for something to watch, you're kind of comparing a backyard fight to, to the UFC yeah. in terms yeah. of production quality. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a real challenge for um, for all the federations is how do you get bums on seats? And, and, you know, I mean, I came from powerlifting, which is an even less watchable sport. Um, it's how do you make events like that? And I know guys um, ran their own competitions and they put a DJ in or something like that just to lift the standard. But WBFF certainly have, have got a uh, winning formula when it comes to to viewability and viewer experience. Like when you're live at that venue, it's like you've gone to maybe a, a, a production, you know, and you've gone and watched something. So mm -hmm. anyway, here's um, Dan's page there and um, looks like you've done a ton of photo shoots, mate. Yeah, it's just the old, um, you know, when you're in comp shape, make the most of it and yep. pump out as many photo shoots you can before you go back in the off season. <laughs> You know, what I will say too is that, um, you know, it's been a long time since you and I've caught up and um, I had a scroll through your Insta page today and my first thought, and I said, look, I'm, I'm going to share this with you, Dan, is um, that you're a far better bodybuilder than I ever gave you credit for. You know, some of these photos I look at and think, you know, I, I always knew, you know, like I always went, Dan's got a great set of legs, you know, to me that's a big thing. Um, but as an all-round physique, you know, it's something you've, created something that has got a, enough size that it's respected by your typical hardcore bodybuilder, but you've kept that great aesthetic look that's very accessible and, and very marketable. So, yeah, really cool to see some, some nice photos here. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's definitely always been, you know, my inspiration has always come from that golden era, you know, the likes of the Frank Zanes and um, guys like that. So, I was always, you know, bodybuilding's always been my passion and, you know, starting in the IFBB, the goal was looking at, you know, the open bodybuilder guys and like, okay, do I, do I want to push to that? Is that what I want to be? Um, and it's not that it's something that I don't think I could do, but for me, um, I just like the more aesthetic look with the smaller waist and just keeping it tight. Um, and so, where I compete in muscle model is very similar to your um, classic physique. Cool. Maybe Mike might be a chance for you to ask some questions about yeah. some of the classes. Yeah, looking forward to um, asking you about those. There was um, we've had uh, NZFBB, we've had NABA on uh, fairly recently. We've talked through, we've done some show previews, and reviews, and talked about a little bit about the classes there and the new classes that have come in for some of those federations. But I mean, could you let us know a you know, what are the classes involved in WBFF mm -hmm. and potentially, as you've just said there, how they compare to something that might be a little bit more familiar to um, some of the listeners, you know, like this uh, muscle model compares to the classic. Yep. Okay, so for the males, we have um, fitness model and muscle model. So the fitness model is, I guess, what you would compare to like um, a sports model or men's physique, except they're showing the legs. So the guys are more athletic looking. They're not overly 
huge, but, you know, still look aesthetic, muscular, um, and, you know, have to have really good conditioning. Um, the muscle model is open in terms of weight category, um, but the shape is more towards a classic physique. Um, I was at Worlds last year, and I'm about 97 kilos on stage, and I was the smallest guy there by, you know, 5 to 10 kilos. So even though it is a classic physique, these guys are all up around 110 kilos plus on stage. Um, so they're not, they're, they're big boys, um, but just keeping the, the shape a bit smaller without the restrictions of the classic. Um, as for the females, we have bikini category, um, fitness model and figure. So the bikini model is based on more of like a classic bikini shape. So not as lean and muscular as like an IFBB bikini girl. Um, they have a bit more shape, you know, more glutes, more quads um, with slightly softer look. Um, as for fitness, you'd probably compare that more to an IFBB bikini, um, but with a slightly more muscular. And then figure is pretty much on par with um, IFBB figure. And uh, with your um, muscle model, uh, your males class, do they still get the same sort of degree of hardness, separation and vascularity that you expect to see in, um, in your physique athletes and uh, the other federations? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. The guys are, yeah. you know, the guys at the top of the game are just like any other federation in the world, you know. You're competing against the pros. They're um, very competitive, crazy <laughs> conditioning. Um, and, you know, seeing from some of my photos, you know, I'm in reasonably good condition, but my conditioning just certainly wasn't enough when I got up against the best in the world. Um, and in comparison, you know, a lot of guys have swapped, you know, between WBFF and IFBB and, you know, WBFF pros that have left and gone to IFBB instantly became IFBB pros and, you know, qualifying for Olympia and stuff. So in terms of quality, they're, they're pretty much on par. Obviously, the IFBB just has a much bigger population in terms of the males. Hey, Dan, how, how, so how, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. how tall are you, Dan? You said you're 97 on stage. What's your height? Uh, 5'10", or 180 centimetres. So, so, I mean, you're an inch taller than me and very similar weight, probably slightly heavier than I was on stage. You're actually, you know, probably looking at the photos, they probably don't do you justice in terms of just actually how big you really are. Um, because, you know, anyone that's sitting up near that, near that 100 kilo mark at, at our kind of height, is genuinely, you know, in the top two or three guys at any given show in New Zealand. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's hard to compare. Like, I mean, a good thing you always get is you go in the gym and you meet someone off social media you might not have met in person. They always say, geez, you're much bigger than I thought you were, which you're always going <laughs> to take that. Um, but, you know, a lot of the guys, particularly in Australia, these are guys that are in between IFBB and... Um, WBFF and you know there's really competitive guys in Australia and they're all huge over there so and they're just swapping between classes and a lot of them are open bodybuilders so there's yeah some really big boys and as I said they're all you know the top guys are well over 100 kilos on stage. In the um, females that I've seen like Hattie and people like that you know they are, are they are real class athletes you know the um, I don't know if you've had a chance to see, look at it Mike but um the WBFF and, and some of the women's classes have got some just mind-blowing athletes. And, and the cool thing about it is that they often put up um, photos from photo shoots. So I guess a bit like Katia was doing, not just your standard gym photos and on-stage photos, but some really neat artistic work too. So, you know, you get to really showcase those physiques, which is cool. Now, you're, um, none of your uh, classes in WBFF have any height or weight restrictions. It's purely judged on... The look, so we stay in men's, uh, men's male model uh, by the look as opposed to any weight or height restrictions? Um, as, as a novice or amateur classes, we have height classes um, depending on how many people are in the class. So, you know, bikini shows like the one we had in New Zealand um, last year, we had, uh, I think, about 120 bikini girls. So we had to swap, you know, cut into four classes just because there's so many to fit them all on stage at once. Um, but once you become pro, then it's completely open. There's no height restrictions. Hey, um, we'll talk about WBFF um, a little bit. So for those people that aren't aware of that, really cool, go have a look on look their Insta page, WBFF New Zealand. But there's also a link there to, the, to their web page. Um, and also, you know, if you want to see close to home, have a look at WBFF in Australia. Um, I think it's really amazing 
the growth in, in, in the WBFF um, in Australia. We had our first, it was our inaugural show 2019. How many athletes turned up to that? Because it was a phenomenal number for a, you know, a first cut show. Yeah, so our very first show we've ever had in New Zealand, we had close to 180 athletes, um, which I believe is the biggest show in New Zealand's had already. So, yeah. um, and we're pushing for a prime in 2021 where we would expect um, 300. So, yeah, we're taking on taking on new water. It's going to be, yeah, big. I mean, the, in, in, in Australia, they're getting 300 plus at the, all these shows now. And they're the biggest shows in Australia. So they've overtaken IFBB in Australia. Um, and I, I think for the reason that, particularly for the females, you know, they love the glitz and the glamour of it. It's a bit more, um, because th there's other rounds to it, you know, we have, um, so they have theme wear for like the figure girls, that's like the Victoria's Secret stuff with the wings and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the girls have like the evening gowns as well. So it sort of adds a little bit to it. Um, and I think, you can show a little bit more personality on stage, I think, with the posing for the girls. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just attracting, it's, it's a more, it's a reinvented of the old bodyboarding ways, I think. It's yeah. not as structured as it used to be um, and making more of an event and a, a production, you know, so it's... It's a showcase. Um, it's a definitely a showcase. I mean, the thing that really got me when, when I went over there was the, um, I don't know what you call it, but the meet and greet before... Um, so all the athletes come in, Mike. Um, they have all the officials, all the pros are there. They're all decked out in in ball gowns. It just looks amazing, you know. And they have um, the backdrops and photographers, and it, you feel a little bit like you're at a um, I don't know. It feels like the paparazzi's there, and and it's very much a oh I'm an A-lister for the day sort of thing. And it's it's a very glam a very glamorous event, but it also I guess for any athlete that that does that. It's a real experience, you know. Um, it really adds to it. It's almost like a, it's a bit like a, a mini press conference almost, and you, you know, pretty. It's pretty sensational, I've got to say. Well, when you've worked that hard for that long, it's nice to make a fuss on the day, right? Well, that's that's right. You know, you know, we all go through these preps. Some of us are prepping, you know, twenty plus weeks, and <clears throat> I think the most frust was well, not frustrating, but you know, once we got there on stage that day. And it's all just, boom, it's over, you know. We, we're up there for a couple of minutes and it's all said and done. And you're kind of like, oh, wow, all that time. And it kind of didn't feel like much in the end. So I think it's more of a celebration for everyone, you know, to get to that finish line and really make a, a spectacle out of it. I'm still a big fan of um, being so good that you walk out on stage, they leave you at the back of the stage, they do all the other call-outs, you don't even get a call-out, and you get the trophy at the end. I'm happy with that, but I can see the value, <laughs> the value in actually having more than 30 seconds in the spotlight. So, um, you know, I think what they're doing is, is really good, and, um, you know, certainly um, there is a video that I want to play because it sort of showcases just how top end the event really is so I might just have a quick squiz and see if I can find that video eh? oh, I was going to ask you do you guys still wear the suits and, and, and all the rest of it do you do sort of... so um, for the men's fitness they do a suit round as, as well so in the evening we do pre-judging in the morning which is um, you know in your trunks yeah. um, and then in the evening they do one more round in the trunks and then come out for prize giving in their suits um, at Worlds we did a suit round as well so the world show runs a little bit differently but um yeah just usually just the fitness men in, in the suit gotcha gotcha yeah they look pretty sharp i've got to say the boys all look like gq models so um <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty impressive oh and just coat you're working, there. You're working their tailors pretty hard yeah you know, you get something that fits right yeah well every show you do you got to get a new bloody suit made if you yeah. you know hopefully if you made progress and uh, Jess, is, Jess is one of our um, New Zealand WBFF pros as well. And yep. she, she competed in Bahamas in 2019. Yep. How'd she go? Yep. So she came over as well and she got seventh as well. Wow. Cool. Nice. Uh, and Amy Lee um, from New Zealand, yep. Yep. Uh, I believe she got fifth as well. Fifth wow. in the world. Cool. Yeah. She, she made quite a, quite a um, impact on the scene when she first came on because, yeah. you know, um, she certainly wasn't known as a, as a, um, as a competitive athlete, um, and then all of a sudden, there she was, and, and she, she had a fantastic package on stage. She was really impressive. 
So yeah, here's, um, she's got a big, um, big future ahead. I think she's going to be right up there. Ooh, the separation, love it. Um, yeah, so he's he's um, world fitness model champion. So that kind of gives you an idea of what what the fitness models look like. Wow. So definitely, a, a, you know, because um, initially when you say fitness model, I guess your first thought is men's physique and yep. certainly um, a, a, probably a level up from, from most, most of, you're more like an international um, competitor, I suppose you'd expect. Yep. Yeah. Do the men's okay. fitness model do a, do a fitness round where they um, sort of do uh, acrobatic type gymnastics type tricks like the women do in fitness model and IFBB? Mm -hmm. No, it's just um, typical bodybuilding poses. So you just come out, do your quarter turns, um, do your own posing routine, and then um, have comparison round. Right. Yeah, you guys get some really amazing venues too. Uh, um, the, the venues over in Australia were sensational. Um, you know, and it, it always seems to be in the really glamorous places, which kind of fits with the whole image. So I think um, in that respect, Paul Gillette has done an amazing job setting this up. And, and I think I mentioned to you earlier, Dan, and Mike, you'll certainly remember Paul from um, back in the 90s. Paul, for those that don't know Paul Gillette, he was the probably the mass monster because he was so big as well. He was six foot two or three. And he was just a phenomenal athlete on stage. But his posing was absolutely attractive. <laughs> and, 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 and he was well renowned for having, you know, been one of the biggest guys, but at times didn't show his physique off and almost had that reputation for being a little bit, looking a little bit clumsy on stage. Now, his presentation of his, his federation is the complete opposite. So, um, you know, when I heard Paul Gillette's WBFF and I saw the WBFF, I thought, hmm. You know, these two things kind of, kind of don't add up. So he's obviously um, a very, very slick businessman and got some real good vision. Do you, do you get to spend much time with guys like Paul? Yeah, so um, spent time, a little bit of time with him in Bahamas. Um, and then for the inaugural New Zealand show, we flew him out from Canada to New Zealand. So he stayed here for about four days or so, um, sort of took him around a bit of a tiki tour and... Um, yeah, and he just sort of helped us run through a few things um, on the show in terms of lighting. Like he's, he knows everything about lighting and sound and he's like an audio engineer um, because he's just done so many of these shows, you know, and for him, he's so meticulous about those details. Um, but uh, it was great getting spent time with him and, you know, sort of like anyone, once they sort of let their wall down, they get to know you, you know, and we're sitting there having a coffee and, he starts telling you all, all the war stories from <laughs> the Olympia days and, you know, all the world tours and stuff they went on. It was, yeah, really awesome to spend time with them. Cool. Hey, um, there's probably one thing that um, that also sets them apart, WBFF. Whenever they run a show in be it Australia, New Zealand, all the officials from America or the majority of the officials from America are present. So you always have an international presence at every show to ensure consistency, I guess is the, the thought behind that? Yeah, we try, we like to have international judging panel um, so that there's not, you know, the same judges all the time. We want to have fresh eyes on it. Um, you know, we can't have anyone that's coaching to be judging, anyone that's a posing coach or anything, you know, so there's just for competitors peace of mind mm. that when they jump up on stage, they're not thinking about, oh, he's, he or she's coaching them. That's not very fair, you know? So just completely eliminating any of that. Cool, cool. So I guess, um, you know, 2020 was a, a real mess of a year. Federations like NABA um, scrapped every show except for the nationals. Um, um, IFBB ran a handful and had to cancel a whole bunch. There's still question marks, I guess, over things like Pro-Am for next year because can we get international competitors in? Now, you guys also fell under that, you know, you couldn't run your 2020 show after pretty terrible timing. You had your initial show, which was just absolutely phenomenal and all the hype was building and then we got hit with COVID and look, we can't control that. But what are the plans looking forward for WBFF in New Zealand? So, yeah, obviously it was very disappointing that we couldn't put that show on and it was, we were sitting there holding as long as possible in the hopes that, you know, everything would open up. Um, and unfortunately, it's 
it's a show that runs on a huge budget and it's not something we can gamble. Um, you know, otherwise yeah, we're just going to lose out and then we wouldn't be able to put on another show, you know? So we had to look at it from a logistical standpoint um, and also, of course, you know, athlete safety. So we figured it was better to let it go this year. Um, and because it was up in the air, back and forth all the time with openings and closings of borders and all that sort of stuff, it was stressful for the athletes, you know, and then they're not going to be able to have like that prep that they really wanted to have. Um, so we just thought in the end, you know, look, it's not worth us doing it. Um, so moving forward for next year, um, we have a show penciled in for 3rd of July next year. Um, and we're still working on hoping that to be a pro-am, um, which if we do, will be huge. Um, obviously, depending on, you know, if the world's back to normal yet, if we can, if we can travel. Um, but yeah, that's the plans. Cool, cool. And that was tentatively running in Auckland again? Yes. Cool, cool. Uh, look, that'll be really cool. And uh, look, um, I'll be the first one to buy a ticket because, um, yeah, I mean, it's an experience. And I think everyone, no matter who you compete for and that, it's definitely worth getting along and just seeing what what we can actually do with our sport to a certain degree. So um, we're probably uh, running out of time, but I really, I guess just want to hand over to you, Dan, and just put any messages out there that you want to put out, whether there's people you want to thank for all their um, hard work in terms of getting that initial WBF show off the ground and dealing with all the pressure of 2020 and maybe running a show, maybe not. And they, they probably didn't get a lot of um, a lot of airtime in terms of the thanks that they deserve. So is there some people out there that you want to sort of um, acknowledge for their support of the Federation? Um, so, of course, my business partner, Jake Campus. so him and I are directors of WBFF, yep. um, and Jake puts in a huge amount of work um, on the, you know, the financial side and all the, the paperwork side. Um, so, you know, without Jake, we wouldn't be able to do it either. Um, Jess, she was, like, unbelievable doing all the hair and makeup, and um, we had an amazing turnout of helpers backstage. I think we had about 30 helpers backstage. So we almost have about 50 staff on the show on the day um, just to make sure everything just like clockwork. Um, but most importantly, all the athletes, you know, that that for a lot of them, they've never been to a, never even been to a WBFF show before, you know, but to, to take the investment and to be able to trust us to, you know, invest their time with us that we're going to do a good job for them, you know, particularly thank all them. Um, and say thanks to you guys because I think what you guys are doing is pretty awesome, you know, and I think it's important that, you know, era's gone by, you know, there's a lot of clashing heads between different federations and stuff like that, and I think that doesn't get us anywhere. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, we all love the same thing. We all have a common love for it, and you know, majority of us are all, like, best mates, and we all catch up with each other, and, hey, man, what's up? We're like, best mates, you know, and it doesn't matter who you're competing for or what federation you like or dislike for whatever reason it may be. At the end of the day, we all have the same goal, and we all have the same passion, and I think that we should embrace each other and no negative towards each other. You know, that's that doesn't help us grow. And, you know, if, if we're all growing a little bit at a time, you know, we all grow together, and it's only better for bodybuilding, yeah. and I think that's really important. Absolutely. I mean, we've got a, a reasonably small pool in New Zealand and um, we've got a really cool bunch of people and we've got, um, I guess, like like every sport that New Zealand kind of gets itself buried into, we have some people that perform at a, at a really amazing level given, um, you know, most of the, traditionally most of the knowledge base in bodybuilding was offshore. I guess, um, you know, social media and things has opened that up a lot and online training and all that kind of thing. But also, I think that the community does support support it. The athletes support each other and the federations more. So that, that is a really cool thing. And I will tell you that we've got a uh, girl in, in Hawke's Bay who was dead set on doing WBFF in 2020. And because it was cancelled, she's now training away doing some, some lifting. Um, but she was adamant when I spoke to her that she is WBFF a lot. So she's fully committed to you guys and hasn't even done a show. So I guess, you know, what you are doing in the communication you guys are having with your athletes is, is, has been good through that period because people are still very motivated to um, get on stage with you. 
Yeah, that's right. And look, we have workshops throughout the year um, and they'll be posted through on social media and stuff. But one thing I always say to the you know, competitors as well is when we have these meetings is that you're never going to be looked down upon. It's never going to be held against you. If you go compete somewhere else, I would prefer you to go do a show here, go do a show there. It's only going to make you better, you know, and you're not going to be upsetting anyone by doing it. You don't have loyalties to to anyone. No one's paying you. There's no bills being paid. You don't just go do what you enjoy. Um, and if someone doesn't like that, then tell them to. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Good attitude. Good attitude. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so we're going to, going to wrap, but thank you very much for your time. Um, I know, you know, your time is very precious, so I really appreciate it. And um, I know that there'll be a bunch of people out there that will take a lot from today. And there'll be a bunch of people that went, Oh, WBFF, that's an option I haven't thought about. So for those people that are interested, check it out on Insta, get in touch with Dan and um, from us, a very good night and stay safe out there and have a great week's training people.